Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a video today and today it is episode 1 of Academy Access. Now if you do follow me on my Twitter, the uh, links will be in the description and will be on the screen right now. You will have noticed the other day, well the past few days, I have been mentioned about this mystery series and here it is. It's Academy Access. Now what is the concept of Academy Access? <coughs> kind of says it in the name. Gives you a little bit of an insight into the players of the Youth Academy rating their performances out of 10 in a specific game. And the under 23s the other day, Tucon West Bromwich Albion's under 23s. So you probably know most of these youth players from the derby we lost against Port Vale, which I think is a kind of an unfair um, basis to base to go off, where they were playing against a professional side. Uh, well, professional, they'll be in non-league next year, so... Playing against what is at was at the time a professional football club, so I can't really give them a bad grade on that game, and also the atmosphere as well, and the way the Port Vale players were playing, um, you can't really judge them off that. So I went along to the game on Monday just to give myself a little bit more of an insight, watch the players a bit more in detail, watch the runs they were making, watch the. Um, the passive they were making the movement off the ball. But anyway, let's get into the game and uh, we should we'll, we will rate everyone's performances after the game. You to the back. Oh. Half time now. 3-0 to the under 23s, so we're doing alright. Villinden, probably the star player so far, he's um, quite good on the ball. Looks confident. Whether that's just because all the players in the under 23 region aren't the best. But even I think we should get him in the, get him in the first scene because he's quite good. Timmons impress, Sorensen. We've got a few first teamers including Jufi, Adam, Sorensen, you could count him as a first team player, and Fletch. Yeah. Centre backs have looked solid as well. We've been quite good. Keep it up boys. And here we have the West Brom team doing their rendition of the hokey cokey. Oh, the hokey -cokey. Penalty. Yes. Yes. Good luck. So I did actually manage to get my hands on a team sheet, which is they give the, well, they give them out free of charge at the games. So they're quite good to you know, especially you wouldn't have heard of most of the players unless you play a lot of Football Manager like me. So starting off, uh, we did have three um, first team players in there. That was Darren Fletcher, Mam Joff, and uh, Charlie Adams. So we will be excluding them from the ranking thing. So, my man of the match from the game was number 11, Thibaut Verlinden. 
Um, he just looked really confident on the ball, and uh, I think we should get him in the first team really soon. I think as well, his technical ability as well really does help to bring his mark up. Um, but there was a few instances where the coaches did have to keep reminding him um, to get into position, so that will knock his mark down a little bit as well. So, for Thibaut Verlinden, I'm going to give him an 8.5 out of 10. Next on the list, we have Trey Pemberton. Uh, he played at the left winger in the first half and right winger in the second half, so he switched it up a little bit. He had a really good first half, and obviously he's not the biggest stature of person in the, in the, in the team. But when he came up against some of them West Brom lads, he did look really confident, and some of them were quite big. And... Um, the amount of times he got a little nudge, well, I say a little nudge, I mean absolutely shafted to the other end of the pitch. Got side tackles, you know, he just kept getting up and getting on with it. Uh, he did actually come off, though, later on in the game. I'm going to give uh, Trey Pemberton a 7 out of 10. Now, the next player is William Forrester. He played at centre-back, and again, I think he had a fantastic game. Apart from the West Bromwich Albion goal, which was a little bit of poor defending, but... It was a well-worked goal by West Brom. They certainly uh, put the washing machine football in play. Um, but yeah, for the majority of the game, him and um, Nathan Collins, his centre-back partner, they both had a really good game, putting in some really well-timed challenges as well, uh, not conceding any penalties, not conceding many fouls, actually. Um, but I'm both going to give them a 8 out of 10 as... Um, they just played fantastic for the whole game, apart from the little lapse of concentration which did lead to the West Bromwich Albion goal. But, you know, there's time and development for that to be worked on. Next player is Lasse Sorens. He has made a few first team appearances uh, over the last couple of months, but he did come off injured about the 80th, 70th minute, something like that. They don't actually put a clock on um, in the under 23s game, so you kind of have to go off what time it is to just put, give yourself a rough, a rough estimate of uh, what time the game is. He did have a few bad touches, a few bad passes, but he is a centre midfielder, so he is going to get a lot of ball time, so he will be making bad passes at some point in the game. You can't really expect you know, players like Luka Modric um, to be making brilliant passes the whole game, especially towards the second half, just before he did get injured. Uh, his little is obviously fatigued, but... He had a brilliant game, uh, made some well-timed challenges, getting back as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. Next player is Josh Tymon. He also has made some first-team appearances, most recently uh, a couple of months ago, where he did unfortunately get dragged off in the 37th minute or something like that. Which is a bit of a shame, especially for a youth player where uh, a little something like that can knock their confidence quite a lot. But I think I don't think it was the right move. Maybe should have waited till half time. But that's a whole different story. Not, that is nothing to do with academy access. So yeah, Josh Tymon played uh, most notably uh, on the left, where Tebow with Villinden was playing in the first half. Again, um, he made some brilliant overlapping runs, linking to the second goal in the first goal as well. Tebow Villinden and him work really well together, and I think their partnership could be. Um, brilliant to bring into the first team especially as we haven't really got a, a proper um, left back we're playing kind of Sam Klukas there but I feel like we're playing him a little bit out of position which I think we should try and bring in uh, Josh Tymon for a game see how he does with Thibaut Verlinden maybe against a weaker team perhaps Reading who's coming up in the next couple of weeks I'd probably give Josh Tymon a 7 out of 10 he had a solid game and he got there's good potential going forward, especially I think he'd fit perfectly into Nick Jones' system. Overlapping runs um, as well. Number two, uh, Scott Warrer. He played at right back for the majority of the game. Well, I say majority of the game, I mean all the game. He had a brilliant game as well. Um, made some brilliant tackles, well-timed challenges. and he, all, all in all, he had a brilliant game. I'll probably give him a 6 out of 10 um, for that. But without further ado, let's get into the final player, and it is Jakob Haugard. He could have played better, but he could have made a lot more mistakes. Not saying he made a mistake. Um, he played pretty well, I think, for the majority of the game, apart from the West Brom goal. But the West Brom um, shot, while well, the goal was like, the shot was about two yards out. So what can you really expect a keeper to do there? Not much, I'd say. Uh, but yeah. I'll probably give him a 6 or 5.5 five, 5 .5, uh, for his game. So, if you guys, I've enjoyed the first episode of Academy Access. If you are new around here, do not forget to subscribe down below. 
uh, for more Academy access. I do have a new series as well, another new series starting next week. It is called European Nights, where we go along to as many Champions League games as possible, rate the experience, rate the cost of the day, rate the atmosphere, all that stuff. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.